Hi, I'm Kathleen. And I'm Sean. And you're listening to the Dead Baby Bear Podcast. Dead Baby Bear. Ooh. Long story. How much time have we lost? Ten minutes. Oh, that's nothing. So that was so ten minutes is gone forever. What yeah. were you talking about in the last? And you had a Probably great. That's shit. the worst part. He had such a good intro. It was the best intro he's ever done. So professional. And oh, you're joking. Yeah. I didn't even do one. <laughs> no, you did one. You said did you I? said oh, the yeah. podcast. Right off the, the hop. I did yeah, mean the like we did have bear actually podcast brought to you by the Northern Queen and Kathleen's husband. <laughs> yeah, he makes us food when he's Adam. here. <laughs> Welcome. To, this is the COVID showdown. <laughs> The era of shotgun funerals and oh, shotgun funerals. Oh, you know, we never thought we'd enter an era of shotgun funerals, <laughs> did we? No. Where everybody's just like, "Fuck it, let's go to Vegas and die." Let's go and die. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah, I have a, like I had like a few relatives pass away of just natural causes throughout all this, and they, we haven't had funerals for them. I think everything's natural causes. Well, not you like know? a not like a like a You're forced right. it natural wasn't like cause. A, it wasn't COVID. And I mean, I'm, that's the worst thing too. Is like I'm a hypochondriac, so it's kind of weird because I always thought like a hypochondriac was somebody who like faked an illness for attention. Yeah. But really, it's just like crushing uh, anxiety. They just think they have every disease. Manifests itself as like physical symptoms, so yeah. you start to like have all this anxiety and adrenaline and like. And then you start to have like pains in your abdomen and then you Google yeah. it. And then it's and cancer. And it's like the worst, which I always think is funny. Like whenever we talk about like uh, Google your symptoms, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. You, oh my God. You'll think you have the worst thing. But then when it's, we're talking about any other thing, they're like, do your research. <laughs> do your research. Hey, you want to know about COVID? Do your research. Just Google COVID hoax. So when it comes to something like science, like medical science, yeah. we're, we were smart enough to know that you as a non-scientist can't do that research. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to lead you down a road filled with cancer. Like, but people don't see the connection between like Googling uh, abdomen pain uh, and cancer. You can make that same link to COVID restrictions and communism. Yeah. Right? It's a very unlikely outcome, but of course it's loaded into the machine that's designed to hold our attention forever. Yeah. Into our fucking laptops and phones. So we can't see the logic. Like we can see it when, if you talk to any conspiracy theorist about Googling symptoms, they wouldn't be like, do your research. They'd be like, don't fucking do that. It's crazy. You'll think you have It's going to send you down this crazy road. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but then you shouldn't go down the other crazy road where you pretend you understand climate science. (laughs) Yeah, because you read two articles from a dot org website. It's the exact same logic. (laughs) It's all going to be on there. Like, well, I read one thing that fucking, like, yeah, you did. Of course you did. Why would it all be. Like if I Googled abdominal pain yeah. and all of it, and it was nine pages of gas and bloating. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. Right. Boring. I'm not going to stay on my phone. No. But if it's like you have pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Now you got me. There's nothing now sexy about gas and now bloating. Now I'm listening. There's something sexy about pancreatic cancer. There's though. kind of something sexy about it. Yeah. It's a sexy one. The, a lot of sex symbols died of it. Probably. That's one of the reasons uh, it's so Patrick sexy. Patrick Swayze. I guess when you're that sexy, it comes for you first. Yeah, it does. Well, that was Patrick Swayze. And then, we start calling it sexy cancer now instead of pancreatic cancer. I was hoping after he died of pancreatic cancer that he'd do ghost too. <laughs> oh, sh- get out of here, Grandpa. All right. We were doing so good on this podcast. It was what? funny what and mean? great. And you then, think that that is the thing that destroys I think that's going to ruin us. <laughs> ghost too. No, he was a white straight male and I'm making fun of his Maybe dad, he'll do so ghost dad too with Bill Cosby. Oh, okay. Oh, Bill. Don't bring Bill into this. <laughs> Bill Cosby is ghost dad. Who was that comedian hero that outed him, like, just by saying Hannibal his name? Burris? Yeah. I, I, my favorite thing, though, is, like, they're, they're like, Hannibal Burris outed af- after 30 years of women being like, yo, Bill Cosby likes to drug and rape us. Shh, don't say it because... And they're yo, and then one like one show that gets put on the internet, and it's Hannibal Burris going, did you know Cosby is a rapist? And then it just snowballed. But it's like, that's... That's just like, that's just how women get it. <laughs> like, no one will so. listen to us. But so you think that people listen to black men more than white women? Probably in some ways, maybe. Just men yeah. in general. Don't think it matters the race. I, I think race okay. in this, in this situ- in the gender situation, I don't think race has anything to do with it. It doesn't matter what race that man was. He's the one that said, oh, guys, guess what? That guy is raping people. Then they're yeah. like, oh, let's take him seriously. He wasn't there at all. <laughs> But as a hypochondriac, you get, like, you'll Google things, right? And then you become convinced, like, okay, there's one of three things I have. Yeah. Um, It's either something I don't want it to be. It's liver cancer, which has a five-year survival rate of, like, 11%. Yeah. I don't want that. 
or uh, could be bile duct cancer, which bile has a survival duct. rate of five year survival rate of 18%. Sean, how long do you so spend fingers Googling crossed, cancer? Fingers crossed, all hopefully this. it's bile duct Jesus cancer. Jesus Christ. Or it could be the old Swayze bomb. The Swayze bomb. <laughs> Dirty, dirty cell dancing. <laughs> dirty cell dancing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like when I get like uh, like issues, I I try to ignore them for as long as possible. <laughs> like, really? If I like, be, I think once I had to have a, a gastrointestinal X-ray where mm -hmm. you have to like clear your body out of everything, and they give you this like it tastes like like a fizzy fruit drink. Yeah, it's, I think it's semen. It's clear. Okay. <laughs> it's not semen, but uh, yeah. it's a laxative, and you have to drink it the night before you do this stupid x-ray test. And, and did you need it for pain? Like, did you have No, pain? you have to drink. Oh, well, yeah, I was having issues in my stomach. I didn't know what was going on. So she's like, well, we'll get a, a gastrointestinal picture or whatever. And or were you terrified that it was something terrible? No, or I was you know, just like, I'm, I'm sick of being sick. I'm sick of feeling sick. But so Good anyway, but that stuff... I, this is why I will never, if I have stomach pains, I have to be dying to do that test again. Because it literally makes you shit for 12 hours straight. It's like mm. you did ayahuasca, but you didn't get the benefits. You, yeah. you have to like, because you have to have like no, nothing in your system. And like, it was awful. So I did it. And then I go into the place and my appointment was for the week after. Yeah. So I had to do it all over oh. again. <laughs> the week, like, it was, and it is awful. It is awful. And like, so that's why whenever there's something wrong with my stomach, I'm like, I'm toughing this out. I don't want to do that again. Ugh. It's, oh, it's, it's awful. It's like the morning after pill for food. Yeah. <laughs> God, that sounds awful. <laughs> but I think most people are like you, right? Yeah. Where they're like, oh, I just like put it off and I live my mm -hmm. life and something terrible could happen and whatever. Yeah. And, the, and then one day I'll pass out and go to the hospital and they'll be like, oh, yeah. you have cancer. But most people are like that. And yeah. it's because, you know, it's a, an evolutionary trait. Like, like our natural state should be that we're constantly terrified of uh, being murdered yeah. or dying of a disease or family members dying. But it's sort of a, an evolutionary trait to be able to put push that aside and enjoy your life. Yeah. But it's not everybody. Like there's so like here's my template. There's like three different types of cavemen that evolved. Right. There was the the uh, a lion comes. And you're like, fuck this line, I'm going to fight it. And then you like get your arrow and your bat. And then it comes at you when you engage with this line. You and know? those were the brave World War II Those were brave, died. right? Yeah. And then there was the, uh, the, the flight. They were the people that ran mm -hmm. and then the lion chased it. And what I, I come from a long line of freezers. Oh, you just... Like people that freeze. So like the lion <laughs> comes and he fucking freezes. That's and then what, the lion eats my you? Ancestor. No. Then the lion approaches you and you reek of your own feces because you've shit yourself. And it doesn't want you. And then he thinks that you're rotting flesh and he leaves you alone. <laughs> Is that right? what you have to do to get a lion to leave you alone? You should shit yourself? You have to shit yourself and freeze. Well, how come they like smelling menstruation? Isn't well, that, don't they like that? Don't they like menstruation? Don't bears and lions hey, like menstruation? The, that's the worst part of being a woman is if a lion ever got you, you'd go pussy first. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the worst thing about being a lady is that, you know, you're alive and there you are. You got just got tripped up by a lion. He clawed, he clawed your shoulder and you're on the ground. And now you're going out puss first. What a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a slower death. Oh my God. That old fucking getting eaten out oh, literally by, by, a, a, by, a lion. You know by I mean? the king of the jungle. There go clit first. Oh my God. Ouch. <laughs> you'd say, you'd all say. Softer. Don't go so. <laughs> and then guys would be there like, I thought they were tougher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Girls always said they were tougher. Oh my God. Guys are so dumb. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of. It's not like when girls suck penises, they like suck them like they're sucking, trying to get that milkshake from McDonald's out. Just like, <laughs> you just got to squeeze the side. That last little bit. Oh, like, I don't understand why some guys think that they got to go like, like a lawnmower down there. <laughs> oh, you mean like fast? Just like crazy and fast. Too much. Yeah. Too much. Too what is like too, just like they're just punching. Look at all these guys. Like, what does she mean? I don't know what she means. <laughs> I don't even care. It's like you know, I'm not looking for tips. I don't. You, who care? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jean Le Convert's not looking for tips. He's looking for dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the tips of Maybe dicks. Maybe the tips of dicks. I don't know. I think all men could use some tips. I'm sure women could use tips too. Everybody should just be nicer. <laughs> I'm a little stoned and. I love that you're like, I think I would just want world peace. I do, just for one year, to be just to nice. see what it's None like. None of it's going to fucking happen. No, None it's not. None of it's going to happen. It's n no, world peace is never going to happen, but 
I, so or I, I just want to be in, on my acreage like we've talked about. Yeah, because uh, so I came from a long line of people that like, freezers, in freezers, the, freezers, <laughs> and and but then all of a sudden there weren't animal tax anymore, right? So it mer it morphed into like I was the kind of guy my ancestors their village would be burning and everyone would be dead inside and, and they would like, freeze and then the the rival tribe that burned the village and killed everybody would just like piss on him and laugh in his face and leave him and alive because it. he was so pathetic yeah and then he would just move to another village and cut his hair and change his name you and... say such nice things about your family <laughs> <laughs> but i'm saying this is this is fucking tens of thousands of years ago my yes. people did this yeah and now we're here in the future where there's no animal attacks and there's no yeah like, so now all we can do is like sit around and go, I think I have cancer. But you're adopted. How do you not know that you're like, a, like your non-adoptive parents? I don't want to say real parents. I don't offend you. I don't know if that's mean. It's kind of mean. Your real parents. But no, I, uh, I like, you don't know that they, and you just were raised by cowards. Oh, that's, you know what I mean? Like well, maybe in another life you would have well, been like nature some tough or nurture. Yeah, maybe you would have been nature some tough or nurture. alpha male. That's interesting. Yeah, because I <laughs> in was the raised army. by like British, you know. You know what British people are like. Yeah, they're very polite. They're, you know, they're sort of like, they're the kind of people that, like, at parties, they're like, oh, well, they're good for them. Yeah. Like, you they, were born in St. Catharines, Ontario? Uh, London. Oh, London. So London, you would, oh my God, you would have been a London, Ontario boy. Oh, yeah, you would have been an alpha male for sure. Fucking great. But you I think so. I would have been alpha. Oh, yeah, you would have been some truck driving alpha male. But I grew up in Alberta with British people. Did they prevent me from turning alpha? Yes, British people did prevent you from turning alpha. But you know what? I like this Sean better than I think I would like alpha Sean. Huh. Well, this Sean is just like a sad, scared, fake British person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to agree so quickly. <laughs> Sad, scared. Your face kind of was talking out fast. Scared, that I, I was sad, like, yeah. scared, fake British person. That's all I am. I'm just a fucking Londoner over here talking. Hate. The only thing is I hate soccer for some reason. <laughs> you would have been the person that lives in London, but like not the good one. That's what you'd say all the time. Right. But not the good. Ha ha. Yeah, <laughs> my parents are from the good one. <laughs> but I'm from the bad one. Yeah, you one. became some snobbish little rich kid it's fun yeah like in england is weird they think I've they're never, smarter than us and i've only ever been to england twice fuck in the airport i really want to go though fuck no you, you don't want to go why no, they think they're fucking better than us they do yeah they look at canada and they're like oh canada <laughs> yeah well like, that's like fuck yourself well that's like going to vancouver and having everybody oh, our tell been you around for hundreds of years like, yeah, you've <laughs> been mostly fucking mincing humans <laughs> That's your legacy, you fucking cowards. <laughs> Pretending the queen is still relevant, you know, <laughs> like propping that up. If that did, if that was in Canada, if we had a yeah. queen and England was, you know, didn't, they'd be like, oh, you still got a queen. Oh like my they God. would fucking, you know, like, oh, that's interesting. It is pretty funny watching the, the monarchy go down. And again, this is another thing before they couldn't say anything because there was no outlet for them. But now every celebrity, even now the royalty, they have an Instagram account. Like they, everybody has access to everybody now. Yeah. So there's no, of course, it's going to start coming out that they were being completely horrible and racist to Di to to uh, Meghan Markle. And of course, that they were <laughs> had a part in killing Diana. Like, of course, this is all coming out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> part in killing Diana. <laughs> No, that was her. They if you talk to my dad, he'd be like, "That was her bloody boyfriend." Oh, because who was dad. that? Because it was a non-white person. Yes, right? that's so <laughs> like the British take. Oh is yeah, they hated. Blame yeah. who the non-white. Yeah. So there was like a Greek boyfriend, yeah. and every British person is. Like, it was the. It was that bloody Greek. You know, like. So yeah, they just like they point away from whites. You have you know that it's like it's not a fun situation when two people like leave that like everyone thinks that being in the royal family you're going to have a great life you're rich and all this have fun but like if those two were like no we would rather leave <laughs> we don't care if that pisses you off we don't want to be part of this you have to know that that's a shitty well it's sort of like it's like you know i it's cool to be in the royal family but for a lot of people that are married into it like megan markle it's like oh i didn't really realize that this was just going to make me a massive target for mockery in for the, the rest of my life and in the people that country so yeah. that's the trade off is like i'm rich and i get to wear these awesome clothes and i get to go to these fucking amazing yeah. places but if i open my laptop or turn on my phone i'm i'm a fucking piece of garbage that's why i don't want to be famous that I is just the trade off rich. that's the trade off yeah right? but what if the you fame... can just be rich and not famous that sounds perfect it's not possible. Why? Nobody in the world is rich and not famous. Shut the fuck up. I'm just up. kidding. There are, but, 
You're right. That would be good. But then you'd have to invent a fucking, you know, like a Dicky D that goes faster. <laughs> Or you just inherit it from your grandparents. Ten, a Dickie D. Remember that fucking scab? Dickie. Do you know Darren Frost was a Dicky D driver? Of course he was. <laughs> He's a Dicky D. It's fucking Dicky D's. I love how they're like, instead of ice cream trucks, let's get children to ride around on tricycles that have a freezer on the front of it. And what happened to them? They, they left. They're I, gone. I like, how did that not, not, not? It was a be. bike. It, was there, a it has to be a thing again. Bike. It has to be. There has to be like bike food carts again. Why is that not a thing? It seems like such a 2020 thing. Yeah, it seems like a great thing. Like yeah. scooting around with skip the dishes and fucking, you know, going to food trucks. And I don't know. It seems. What happened to the Dicky D I don't salesman? Know. Does anybody salesman. fucking know? Let me look the Dick, up. Your local Dicky D rep. <laughs> I'll text Darren Frost. What happened to Dickie? I'll text Darren Frost. <laughs> he knows. Uh, I don't... Because that was a job you could get when I was a kid. You yeah. could be a fucking Dickie D person. And yeah. they were never happy. No, because it was a lot of <laughs> physical exertion. They probably got a lot of shit for not ringing their bell enough. Yeah. You know, because if I was a Dickie D, I would just like cruise through neighborhoods and not ring my bell at all. Yeah. Still a thing. I remember once when I was in Brandon, Manitoba... Of all places. We found the old Dutch potato chip factory, and I was like, what? I was so excited. <laughs> I love factories. Like that food show. I love factories. <laughs> like that food show where they show you all the food is made unwrapped or whatever. Oh, you or probably you probably made. grew up uh, watching Harriet's Magic Hats. Oh, yeah. And and Sesame Street always had. Do you remember Harriet's Bells? Magic Hats, yes. Jim? Fucking no, Harriet's he's way too young Magic for Harriet's Hats. Hats. Yeah. It was like Harriet's Magic Hats and the Polka Dot Door. It was Harriet's. Yeah. Harriet's Magic Hats was better than all that shit. Because hmm. Harriet's Harriet would, uh, like, she was like a, a girl that, you know, every drama room, every drama, like, they would, you know, have a box with props. Yeah. She would just open this box with hats, like, for different businesses, and she'd put it on, and then, boom, she was there. Yeah. So it would be like, boom, let's teach you how to be a fireman. Let's and then... teach you how to, like, run this factory. Let's teach you, you know, how to work the line here at this pig killing zone <laughs> the 80s had so many so much stuff to do with hats like in today's special when the guy took his hat off he became a mannequin again today's special shout it loud, loud and, and clear, clear. today's special, special. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> oh you're old i also watched paul hand and friends and fred penner when he I, but i never understood why he had to crawl through a long log like was he hiding from his wife or something Oh, fuck, like, I what never was he doing? That one. I used you to never watch watched Red Penner? No, no. Well, because really. we didn't have we didn't have cable. Like we had Peasant Vision, so we had CBC Canadian Children's Comedy. That's all we had. That's all you had. And 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 then if we were sick, we go to our grandparents' house. I could watch Mr. Rogers. That included like the Smurfs and Transformers. That's because you were rich British. We were people. very royalty. We were essentially yeah. Fort Saskatchewan royalty. <laughs> No, we weren't. Oh, Good Humor owns the Dickie D now. That's why probably we never see it. Okay. Dickie D started in it. Winnipeg in the early 1950s. That's good. Yeah. It was I a just... good little machine. No, Wait. Harriet's Magic Hats was a good show. Yeah. I watched a lot of, what was that dog Under one? the Umbrella Tree. Did you watch Under the Umbrella Tree? No. With that single lady that lived with the, the gopher, lizard, and what was the other guy? What? Blue Jay, yeah. Oh, you I never, remember no, I never watched tree? much of that. I, my giant. memory is this, is this is poor kid TV then, because we didn't have the cable to watch the, the Transformers. I, and... I used to have to, like, you'd, you'd have to share it, right? I mean, that's we yeah, grew up, the, like... That was the worst. There'd be three kids, yeah. and you'd have to be like, okay, I want to watch Transformers, yeah. and that's at 1230. Sarah's going to want to watch uh, My Little Pony, and, that, and then my brother's going to want to watch Mario. Yeah. So now we've got... So you'd have to, like, divvy up the times and... Like the TV guide was, you know, was an amazing. Like it, was it came a very and you were like, thing. "Fuck, where's the TV guide?" You'd read what each show was going to be about. You just had to know. Like you, I don't even. They, they didn't even have guide on the TV at that time. I don't think. No. Oh God. And I didn't get, get that until I got cable. TV guide. Yeah. Like it came in the mail, and if you didn't get it, you'd go to the post office. Like, yo, we didn't get our TV. The guide. fuck. <laughs> you know what? This I'm is? watching blind here. You know what this is? This is our walk to school uphill both ways. <laughs> because we're like back in our day. We had to share we, the TV because there was only one TV. You had one color TV and one black and white TV. <laughs> and you never yeah. wanted to watch cartoons on a black and white TV. And our parents didn't give a fuck about us. Can you imagine? The kids What's the opposite of helicopter parenting? Drone parenting? Like, what were we They just fly as? off, yeah. There was helicopter That's parenting. Absolutely it. My, then... my mom and, like I, like, I was home after school by myself until she got home from work. 
we used to have like a like a nanny for a while and then like uh i started going to school and i was like i'm not paying for this <laughs> i think even in kindergarten i just go home and i sit and wait i went to my fucking um my thing was like my mom would drop me off in the summer when and there was no school yeah she would just drop me off at my grandma's house yeah and that sounds like, oh, you're just at your grandma's house. But my grandma's house, like, she just watched soap operas all, all day. day long. And I didn't have any friends there. So I just, like, I would end Watch up, like, some... I guess I'm watching Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm, like, an 11-year-old boy who's kind of like, I wonder what's going to happen to Victor today. Oh, my God. That's so funny, Like, Sean. I became, like, an 11-year-old a fake British sad, scared kid that got into Young and the Restless, Santa Barbara, all my children. Um, all my children. And, all my, my mom and then we, children. so we would watch, she would make me tomato soup at lunch. And I always liked to scare her. Yeah. So I would bring over like fake rats and fake spiders. And then I would like put them in her chair and she'd yeah. be like, ah! <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh, you little bleeder. <laughs> bleeder. Yeah, that's what they, old people would call you. <laughs> bleeder. She was very, uh, and she was like weirdly, ra- she was racist in a way that, you know, like that's what makes you have some sympathy for Sir, Sir Johnny McDonald or whatever. Yeah. Because you're like, well, they were all, you know, that's- I mean, what was she supposed to fucking do? Yeah. It's like my wife is a healthcare aid and you know half of the people there are they're racist awful, yeah and there's nothing you can do about it because they're old yeah so they're in their 80s they have dementia yeah and they're racist yeah so now Especially what are you gonna do you, dementia, yeah. you can't go to hr and say excuse me there's an 83 year old man who's dying of dementia he li- and a he uh, said some really racist things the other day like so what deal with it <laughs> yeah He's a white 83-year-old that lives in a long-term care facility in St. Albert. And what his, did you think he was going to do? And be? his great-granddaughter is currently protesting the so war. So most of the people who, um, I mean, that's the great irony of the old white guy, right? Yeah. Is that his life ends up in the hands of a bunch of Filipino and Indian women. Yeah. Um, so he spent That are most, kind. They're yeah, they're kind. kind to him. They're too kind to white people. I guess, but like, the, you know, here's the thing you, that like this, you, it's not like Filipinos care about white people. No. The reason that they can do healthcare jobs is because they look at white people as like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm painting a fence. Yeah. You know, I'm cleaning some old guy's ass, but I don't give a fuck yeah. about him. Like, the they're just white like, ass. Yeah, they're like, you know, they care about other Filipinos. Yeah. And if they were doing it in the Philippines, they'd care deeply, but it's just fucking old white guys. They don't care. No, it's just a paycheck. They're like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> I don't care about this. And they're racist, right? The Filipino people are no the, the <laughs> white old white guys. So the oh, Filipinos yeah. are like, I don't fucking care I don't, about this, this guy. But I just don't. Even if you don't care, I don't know how you could work in that environment every day and just have to like kind of laugh off. Oh, I was in Vietnam. I can tell you a thing or two about Vietnam. Like just like you know. How, yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know. There's a lot of repetitive stories, right? I just don't know how people work in healthcare. <laughs> I have women have rambling stories and men are don't. The reason that men, you know, because women tell different stories. Yeah. That's why women are ramblers, is because they're telling, you know, like women. And why deserve, is it called rambling des- man? Well, because men only have three of them, so we're locked in. <laughs> we're locked in with our three stories that we tell about yeah, ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, yeah, of course men don't ramble when they tell stories. They've got fucking three <laughs> things <laughs> that they talk the about. And then when we get older, we go down to two and one. Yeah. Right? So that women are like, oh, we're all over the fucking place, but at least you're hearing different things from girls. Yeah. Men are just like, well, that reminds me of... And you're like, which of the three is it going to fucking be this time? Your hero story from when you were a kid, your hero story from when you were 20, or your hero story from when you were 43. <laughs> Those are your fucking stories. It's always like, you know, they'll, and sometimes they'll just say stuff so nonchalantly, and it is shocking to hear it now, but you're just like, Grandpa, <laughs> you can't say that that loud in the Boston Pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah, because old, you know, the old guy go-to is, I'm going to do their accent. Oh right. my god, and it's always That's the old guy go to is my dad he used to like to do their accents to yeah. them. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, Dad, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. You can't do that. And he just didn't understand. Because you gotta think like that used to be culturally funny in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. Like a white person doing an Asian accent was actually funny. Well, look at Mickey. To people, in, look at Mickey Rooney in Breakfast. I, I can't even watch Breakfast. I couldn't even watch it long ago when he was that caricature of a Chinese man. Like it is the most. And it's and it's not so even cringy. like good. It's so cringy. It's like even back then, I'm like, aren't you cringed out by this like buck tooth glasses yeah. and like that weird haircut and just be like, ah, like it's so bad. 
it's, but at that time it was like that's good i know that's fun yeah it was, <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's crazy i really we've talked about this before i really want to see where we are like 50 years from now like what the fuck is happening you'll be here I know I'll be dead. I'll be long dead. I'll be long dead. I'll be. I'm not gonna be here for another. I'm not gonna be here till I'm 90. No, I'm not. I don't want to be. That's too long. You're gonna make it. I don't want to make it. I swear to God, (gasps) it's just gonna be so funny. I want to die and go to the next level where like. The next level. That's the. I want to. This this game is boring. I want to. I want to level up. (laughs) What if it's leveling down? Yeah, I don't think it would be leveling down because this seems horrible sometimes. Like, what could be worse than Earth? No, it's fine. COVID restrictions are being lifted. Oh, that was the other thing I was gonna say. It's that's so awesome being a conspiracy theorist because you can manipulate whatever you want to fit your narrative. So, like now that COVID restrictions are gonna be lifted, yeah, or are being slowly lifted, and so many people were saying they're not gonna be lifted. Trust me, that's not what this is about. It's about something bigger. Do your research. Yeah. You know, like those people, now that COVID restrictions are being lifted, the normal person would say, oh, what are they going to go to now that restrictions are being lifted? But they're going to give themselves credit yeah. for applying so much pressure to the tyrannical regimes that were behind this that, you know, they broke through that wall. Yeah. They're going to fucking end up patting themselves on the back oh. all the way to their grave. You know what the, something I saw online was that, you know that Whistle Stop Cafe guy, the one that's been the most vocal of the small town restaurants, like, we're staying open. He got arrested like last week or something. Yeah. And they put him in jail on Friday and then the, the jails were closed so he was there all weekend and stuff. But people were like, they started to go fund me for him. This man has he raised... He probably raised 80 listen, grand. Listen, yeah, this like, man... I saw somebody post about this. He's like, you guys are so stupid. He, this man is paying for the land that his restaurant is on now. You guys are just like, he's just a poor guy in a pandemic. And now you're li- you're not helping him with jail. Man. He's not donating the excess to charity. He's throwing it all in his pockets. This is why it's so dumb to listen to some of these conservative people. Because they're like shifty. Like a liberal person would be like, I'm donating all this. This is something that they would probably do but conservatives are like we're buying the land all right <laughs> we got ahead yeah. in covid i mean there's grifters on both sides oh right? of course but like, but like i just like this guy just makes me the most grossed out like he's just yeah. such a sleazy thanks for subscribing idiot. to my patreon yeah like, you should listen to this guy he's really got some interesting takes i can't contribute to patreons or not patreons to gofundmes unless it's like unless someone's like needs like it's like a family member has passed away or like i just i can't i want to go to mexico and if you can help me remember, let's like, do it <laughs> you get one that's the thing you know but a I mean? lot of people you don't get one yeah if you're a multi gofundme guy good. if yeah. you're a multi gofundme person for that's... non-cancer related things yeah it looks um, bad um just that's a tough look you know you but can't then, but, be a multi go like what are you talking about yeah like everybody needs money yeah Everybody. Everybody needs you're not, it. You're not new. What the fuck are you doing? I would love to put out a GoFundMe that's Who just like, you? I'd like a new wardrobe this year. <laughs> guys, I need new clothes. <laughs> like, like it, doesn't, just... it doesn't make sense. Like, hey, guys, uh, can you give me your... I know that you guys earn your money. Yeah. Um, I choose to live a different way. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it works for me and my family. And uh, <laughs> I just was wondering if... I'm having a tough time covering the, all the expenses on my dog's surgery. <laughs> And it's that like, is one thing I would go fund for, although I should have insurance for them. But I, like, if my dog was dying, I, I still would, would go back and look at the history. I would go back and look at the history. How many times? How yeah. many GoFundMe's have you had? Yeah. If this is your only GoFundMe in your life. Yeah. Okay. I'll I will donate to pet GoFundMe's. I will donate to families that have lost a family member or that have a family member that can't work and they're destitute right now. I'm not gonna donate for something frivolous or something, or some, or because someone made. I usually donate one dollar and then I put my name on it and then I comment, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> 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 I don't, like I do I do donate once in a while, but like if it's something so frivolous that it's just like, yeah, we all want to do that. We all want to pay our rent this month. <laughs> like, I don't some want... people kill it on GoFundMe. They do. You'll see like some lady who's dying of cancer and she's got 128 grand and you're like, fuck. That's, but th- you, that's, that's another, awesome. that's another thing too, is like, this is how people that are so, that, that haven't had anything for a long time. Like, do you know that uh, Instagram account, people of New York, no. he, this guy just takes a, per- a picture of a person in New York and um they they he tells like a story about them it's interesting and he met this like one woman i cannot remember her name 
a bunny or something. And of she's course. Like, if it was a guy, you remember. Yeah, it's totally. But uh, so she uh, she lives in New York and she like she worked as a stripper. She like she had a really cool life and he just kept on doing stories about her because it was just she was just such an interesting person. And like she lived in this little tiny apartment and for, so there was something that she had to pay for. And so they did a GoFundMe and they literally raised like a I maybe a million, maybe not a million, maybe a hundred thousand, but so fast and it changed your life overnight. Like Doing them for like, yourself. Hey guys, it's me. Oh I God. need, and it's like, yeah. uh, I mean, at least get your sister in on this. Yeah. If you can't convince like somebody in your family or your friend group yeah. that they should start a GoFundMe then for you, shouldn't you start the GoFundMe. it shouldn't be started. No. Right. If Cheryl, your aunt, isn't willing to put her name on it. Yeah. It should be in third person. It should be like, <laughs> Billy and Steve need help. Yeah. It shouldn't be, hi, me and Steve need help. <laughs> yeah. That is a tough GoFundMe, and I'd never, I would never uh, donate to a GoFundMe that was started by the person who was going to be using the money. No, it has to be it's sister, such... brother, cousin. I don't know how daughter. Do Somebody that. else has to start it for you. I don't know, like, because yeah. it tells me that everybody in your life is like, he always does this. Yeah. You know, like ah, they always fucking need money. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not starting a GoFundMe for you. Yeah. I'm not putting my name on that. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Get yeah. a job. Get a job like other people do. Work somewhere like other people do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Figure it That's out. That's what life is about. Yeah. It's like true. not everything can be just like, uh, hey guys. And at least people who are grifting, like if you're like a conspiracy theorist with your own Patreon and you're trying to move mineral oil and fucking vitamins and vests that yeah. protect you from stabs, like that's a grift, but at least you're selling something. A yeah. GoFundMe is like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, at least you'll Learn have... Learn to play an instrument. You'll have a garage anything. full of candles if, give me at the something. end of the other one. Yeah. But like, this one, you get nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, what is this? I you just get a give you money? <laughs> get a tax receipt for your GoFundMes? <laughs> oh, God. Like, I, I do truly feel like uh, people need to get, like... It, it, I think GoFundMe should be looking at stuff like this and be like, this is not a place where you can just come along and be like, we're short rent this month. Well... I don't know what to tell you. This isn't. This is for raising money for people who truly, truly need it. Like I've always said, if I was ever rich, I think something fun to do would be go on GoFundMe or like the Kickstarter one and just like donate randomly to people, just read their thing and be like, oh yeah, these people deserve it. But like, there's there's a lot of people that just like. Think but it's but they it's a beautiful something. it's a beautiful free market system where like, you know, I've I've seen people with GoFundMe's where they're like, hey, I need some cash to tide me over till my surgery. <laughs> Looking for about ten G's, yeah, uh, and they'll and then it's zero. They have zero dollars, yeah. and then you look like six months later, zero dollars. Yeah, you're like, how did you? What? I mean, that's why I would never do a GoFundMe. Yeah, I guess that's why GoFundMe really doesn't do it because they can it, open you up to this sort of like you themselves. don't have any support. Yeah, you don't have community support. Okay, well, what about this? For our wedding, we're asking for money for a down payment and no gifts. Is that cheesy? I think no, it, I don't think it's cheesy because like that's it's truly smarter. what we need. That's yeah. like, we don't need toasters. We you don't, don't need, need a rice cooker. I don't need a rice cooker. You don't yeah. need shit for no. here. I, like, we, we truly just want a down payment. And I think with, like, nowadays... You don't nowadays, need doggy wedding dresses. No, I will get them. <laughs> yeah. You have to have doggy wedding dresses. <laughs> but, but I think it's because, like, <laughs> well, you know, like, wedding... Like, nobody gets offended if you give them cash. Like, it used to be such an offensive thing or something. But you have to get them a crock pot. But, yeah, I think it's yeah. super common now. Super common. I even yeah. know like there's websites like you can register that or <laughs> yeah, cool you can funny, register. Like <laughs> well, no, somebody <laughs> told me to do that for it. Someone's like, well, for your thing, just do it as a GoFundMe and send it only to your wedding guests. Like, don't make it public, but say if you want to contribute, you don't have to. But if this is what you want to give us, we would love for you just as a way. But they take so much money off of the top, I think, don't they? What do they get? I don't even know. I what are their fees? They, they have to take something. It. There's not. But they have like even websites like my cut when my cousin got married, they had a honeymoon registry. So they went to Hawaii, and so you could go on and buy them scuba lessons or upgrade oh their hotel god. room. They had the greatest honeymoon ever. They were like doing a helicopter tour. Oh my god! Because you could go on and just be like, "Yeah, I'll upgrade them to the the, the presidential they, suites. They can get the long tubes. Yes, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they can go ten feet deeper than the kids. <laughs> I'll upgrade them. How do I put my visa into this? But that's a good for thing. Sakes. I don't know. That would be. I just want to get them longer <laughs> tubes for their scuba. <laughs> But yeah, older people or some oxygen. find it to be What are you very... going to get us? Longer tubes or oxygen? <laughs> you cheap fuck. Longer tubes, I have no an, oxygen. I have an aunt I've that, had a rough month. I have an aunt that always would like gift to her nieces like um, a silverware set or a china set. And she would always be like, do you want that? But I never, I'm like, I, listen, I moved every 
two years. Like, I don't want a China set. Yeah, I don't want silverware. you got to keep mobile, bitch. Yeah, and I feel like she'd be one that would be like, You're living in the I fucking, you you're something. living over here in the ass district. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what this is Oh my called. God, the police. This is the fucking the sex poli- worker capital of Canada, right? <laughs> Right in this neighborhood. The police copter was like all over the place last night. I'm like, what is happening? Helicopter parents. We, and we live by the airport, so we also sometimes get stars. But stars is red. When it's a black one, it's the police. When it's, it's red, it's a someone dying from a rural area. <laughs> rural area. Yeah, I had a fucking, I had a weird uh, rural death thing. You know, not death, but the person like was pretty fucked up. Okay. After shifts, we would always go and drink on range roads. Yeah. Like when you work at plants, everybody does it. Like, you know, after your last night shift, you go on a range road and get hammered. Yeah. And then drive home. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so it's Alberta. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's like, you know, it's there's no fucking keys, please program. <laughs> it's and like the if range you try road. to take another guy's keys, you better be ready to fucking die. Yeah, because he's going to fight you for them. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> if you were like, uh-uh, you're not driving. And then you grab, like he would crush your fucking hand. <laughs> I am uh, uh, like one of God's children. And then they would, you know, like. Jesus will take the wheel. Only God can take my keys. And then God goes, okay. <laughs> and kills you. So that's what God did this yeah. time. Yeah. God ran his own keys, please program at this one outing. Because yeah. I heard, I was like, I we were all drinking and then I drove off. Yeah. And then this was a long time ago too. It was okay. like 20 years ago. You don't need to explain yourself. This was a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Last week I got trashed on May dirt long roads. weekend, all right? May <laughs> I don't long know what we weekend. were doing there. So yeah, and then all of a sudden I got uh, yeah, like I was leaving and I heard a helicopter like and I was like, what in the fuck? And it was like some guy that was out there drinking that really? was being uh, like airlifted. Oh. Um yeah. he got in a crash. And then they called me in to work his shifts. Oh and I fuck was her. like, fuck you. <laughs> So I did. <laughs> they're, they're like, it's not overtime. And I'm like, yeah, I won't be there. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because, well, so, yeah, I didn't pick up his shifts out of solidarity or whatever. I just, you know, I didn't. But that's not even his. That's, that company should have paid you overtime for, like, solidarity. fucking stupid They brought companies. us in for, like, grief Ugh. counseling or something, even though he wasn't dead. And not paid, though. No, but they were getting, yeah, they brought in, like, you know, it's what corporations do. Oh, yeah. They're like, to deal with what what should we do? Yeah. Um, Somebody's, someone we don't care about has been badly injured. Let's, what was his name again? Okay. Now, can we send flowers to that hospital? So they just, Francie, get Francine on it. So they just get, like, a secretary to send flowers to the hospital of a guy they don't give a fuck about. Make sure his name's written right on the dumb card. (laughs) And then you also go, what about the people we don't care about who are still here? Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. And then you they go. You guys want a pizza party? <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. They're like, <laughs> let's do a pizza party and grief counseling. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they did. They brought us all in for mostly Hawaiian pizzas, which is like. Is that good or bad? I wasn't in the mood for I like pineapple I wasn't in the mood pizza. for pineapple. You know what I mean? Somebody whose life was in the balance. Did you flip a pizza? I, I just wanted cheese. I didn't flip. <laughs> They're like, that's normal. It, you're going through grieving. And, you know, no. <laughs> but they, they kept talking about him like in the past tense. They were like. Like he was dead. So it's, how do you feel about him being gone? And we're like, well, he's. Still alive. At the hospital. <laughs> so I don't know if they brought in the wrong type of counselor or if you can adjust your program <laughs> to a still living human. I'm sorry, but it's all written on these cards. I don't know what else to say. I'm supposed to talk about him like he's dead, and we're like, did, did, but he's alive. Did he so fully maybe recover? we should just maybe we should just get a regular counselor. Um, well, unfortunately, like when you work as a laborer and then you're in a horrific accident, yeah. you very rarely Go back get to back it. to where you can fucking jump in a vessel and chisel again. <laughs> So he never did get to chisel any no. more rusty tanks. His, <laughs> his rusty tank chiseling days. He went straight to the office. We're over. Oh yeah, but he, you know, he didn't have the brain for HR, right? Oh so yeah. It was just sort of like, hey, that water cooler is getting low. Yeah. Um, I think they put him on some fucking light duty program or something. Yeah. Till they could get rid of him because they don't care about people. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, so that's what that's what happened with him. I, like those guys that work those like very. Uh, physical jobs they do have to be very careful they don't hurt themselves 
because they'll lose it all. Yeah. Because you're right, most of them did not go to university. Don't have. Yeah. I mean, and this is me saying I'm I'm too dumb to get a lot of jobs. Like I don't get a lot of jobs. Oh yeah. I didn't, like I'm, I'm not saying dumb. I'm better, but I'm just saying like when you are in a physical job and you start that when you're 19 years old. If and when you're 25, you get in a horrific car accident and you're paralyzed and you're like fuck or 30 even that makes yeah. If you're like on oh, my back, they're yeah. like okay bye. Yeah, get out of here. But it's just my back, and like, you're like yeah. But you move the haul. You're a hauler. You yeah. haul. Adam was chatting with a homeless man because he talks to everyone and he they love talking to, and he's actually quite nice to talk to he says that kind things to them and he he asks them questions about their lives and he, but this one guy he was talking to at we call it scary so over here there's like <laughs> it's a bad like over every, here in the fucking it's just, ass district. they have to play classical music full blast so that people don't stand out front and like loiter there mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it's just like it's but anyway so he was talking to this guy and this guy was like he was probably like maybe forty in his early forties. Big fan of classic music, Big fan. classical music. But he like some homeless like, people were probably like fucking right on. Finally, some Beethoven. He was in front like, of the SO. He was like, well, I, I used to work up north, and then but but then I just got addicted to stuff, and now here I am, and my fa- my my family's offered help, but I just don't want it. Like, and that's the thing is like you could those that's those are the people that are gonna get fucked are the guys that go up there that have no backup plan. If something bad happens, or if they get addicted to drugs, what happens? And that's to a why lot people don't ask those guys questions generally, is because it's so sad. It like is once sad. you get a layer into the but story, also, you're like, "Fuck." It is sad, but it's also kind of like, "Well, well, now I have like I understand why you are where you are." I'm not like, I'm not saying good for you. You got addicted to crack cocaine or whatever, but. But like at least you know I don't know at least you know a little bit of a backstory about something. You just want world peace. I just want. And world you want everybody peace. to be happy. I don't want to see babies blown up. I don't want to see Holy homeless shit. people. I just want everybody. Back to, to be your happy. anti-Israel thing. <laughs> oh, I'm just anti-meanness. <laughs> I'm tired Aww, of the meanness. That's so cute. It's never going away. It's never going away. It's always Everyone should be get here. a puppy. Why can't I be the dictator already? Like we've talked about. Like the kind dictator. Everyone gets fun stuff. And then every once in a while you have to the... give me like a million dollars of your salary. Geopolitics? But... <laughs> I wouldn't drive one of those. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think you'd have a few gaps. You'd have to hire well. <laughs> you need to delegate... You'd be a oh, good I'd delegator. You just guys. delegate. Oh I'd yeah, we'd be perfect. Maybe in the... Jim. Jim <laughs> has a you know he knows how to fucking do a few things. <laughs> whatever the fuck. What he does. What would you do in my my monarchy or whatever? I'd be in I your cabinet, it. and I guess I would just be like, "Are you sure you want to?" <laughs> I'd be that person because it would be mostly military leaders. Yeah. And you. Yeah. Right. And they'd be like, "We gotta get them now," and you'd be like, "I guess we should kill them." You know, like <laughs> let's then you'd be accidentally genocidal. <laughs> That's what you would be as a dictator, is you'd be surrounded by guys with fucking buttons and shit over their shirts because they I accidentally started fought the... in a war they couldn't possibly lose. I accidentally um, started hauling. I love all those guys, like all those American. It's like you couldn't have lost. Yeah. The fuck are you doing with all the ribbons? Yeah, you couldn't have fucking lost. Those medals the in general. The worst you could do is tie, you know. Every and you're I... like, I got all these medals. Like, what about the people that fought on the side they, where they fucking were in a house? When my grandpa came home from World War II, his, his mother threw his medals in the fire. Oh, really? Because she's like, why are they giving you, they almost killed you. Like, your own fucking country almost killed you. And they give you a couple medals and everything's okay. Like, she was real pissed. And my yeah. grandpa hated the military after his experience with the military. <laughs> and I just like, yeah. That's I, the only rule I have with my kids is you like, can't you were never joining the military. Yeah. You were never dying for... Like yeah. some pretend fucking geopolitical. I just get so mad when it, like we watch war. What, victory. What was the war movie we watched the other day? We it would were, have to be we here. We were soldiers. It would have to be here. Like I would only let my kids fight in a if war if there was a war happening here. If the here. war was in Canada and they needed, yeah. If the war is anywhere but Canada, Canada yeah. then there's just no. We don't. You're not going to go to some fucking involved. little country unless maybe I guess maybe if there's like people dying there, but I don't know. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the best thing to do is just say no. There's a classic no military policy. Yeah. Every- Serve your community in other ways. You know, go to the fucking food bank. You don't have to go somewhere and like kill people that don't speak English. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. I just like because I because the only experience with war is movies and stuff. And like when I I'm always so angry after I watch a war movie just for the fact that they try to make everyone like, well, these guys were heroes. I'm like, no, you sacrificed them because your yeah. rich sons stayed home 
when you're when they sent just I the always, young guys off. I always like it uh, when they try to cram a love story into a war movie. Oh, I know. Like, That's my favorite. Oh, when give it's me like, a break. It's a life and death struggle, and you're like, but I still want some puss. Yeah, how many... Hey, what's that girl doing over there? How like, many... So it's like there's Germans shooting at you, and you're in a cabin with some local girl. <laughs> and she and falls in like, love with you. it's like, why is this in the fucking story? Yuki! Sorry, he's digging. <laughs> I mean, did that ever happen? Where guys are like, the Luftwaffe is coming, but let's fuck. Yeah, no, it's so stupid. You would be an accidentally genocidal dictator. You'd be like <laughs> bored at the end of your day watching a show and two military guys would, and you guys, you'd be like, can you guys talk outside? I'm trying to watch this fucking show. And it, they'd be like, we're just trying to decide when to attack. Is this just and like a like, thing because I'm a woman? Early, early. I feel like this is just like a woman because like the same thing happened to Khaleesi in Game of Thrones. She was like this wonderful, kind, benevolent mother of and dragons. Then and then at the like, end, she turned into this like husband murdering demon yeah. dragon lady and i'm like why is it why can't she just stay nice like why well, do they have the to girls turn are in to... charge but then there's still a guy who's like you don't get my soldiers if you don't do that yeah <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> my soldiers fucking won't want that that's true well you, then you're still in charge old fucking ribbons and buttons <laughs> ribbons and buttons. you're just being ruled by a bunch of old dudes and ribbons and buttons i just don't understand oh, why they're like it's so funny because like yeah. if you think about it women should be the ones in the leadership role because they are the mothers and they have maternal instinct and they will want to take care of things more than a man. So like, this is why wrong. We... <laughs> I, and, and I'm also not being that woman. That's like women only should be in charge because I tried to play board games with a group of women and it is not fun listening to them try to decide how the rules are. Like, <laughs> it's always like, well, that's not how we played at the lake. And like, well, no, actually the houses are worth this. Like, it's just women yeah. together as a group. No, but there should be more female leaders. They should be in. They should have the final say. Yeah, That's and more female leaders that are like the uh, like AOC who doesn't give a shit how many people call her a bitch, and she's still like, yeah, I'm gonna still be a total bitch if that's what you want to call me. But I'm gonna actually ask questions that nobody else will ask because they're giant male pussies and they don't want to lose their cushy jobs. Hey, we're tough, <laughs> McGee. A lot of these guys weren't freezers. They weren't born freezers. <laughs> they I'm a were. born freezer. No, you were not. Remember, we discussed that. You were a oh, raised freezer. Oh, so you freezer. think that I was raised to freeze. If you were born in London, Ontario, to let's say a teenage couple, Sean, you'd be That's such who, an alpha. You'd you be think so? so? Oh, you'd be, you'd have like, yeah, you'd be like a truck driving, like, like uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan listening. You think like, so? Oh, fuck yeah. If you grew in, like London, yeah. I'd be, I'd be the kind of guy who was like, fucking Rogan talks to Alex Jones, sign me up. That would be a very interesting, like, study or whatever to see where, like, with adopted children, to see how they really, they were raised well, and then see what they could have been raised as. Most of the studies, like, show that you end up being just like your natural birth parents. Really? Yeah, that despite how you were raised by your adoptive parents, yeah. you end up being very similar in temperament and personality to... It's a combination of your natural parents yeah. and your peer group, your friends. So the people that you, you know, so it really, so parents are almost like a bit like they, you know, in the studies they say like it's almost, they're almost an afterthought how you were raised by your parents. Yeah. Because everybody has the same version of parents. Like you can do it. You're the best. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome. I love you. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah. That's what mom and dad say. But it's like, what are your peers saying? Are your peers like, you got a huge forehead. Look at all your zits. You're fat. Fuck you. Like, that's what sticks. Yeah. That's the stuff that really imprints. Not the fake, I love you bullshit yeah. from your parents. Because, you know, once you're 13, you're like, any t anything your mom says, like, you're the best. You're like, my mom actually raised me to be, you know, very in British style where she would say things like, no matter how good you are at something, there's always somebody better than you. Yeah, yeah. That's so a British, like very to British keep attitude. You in check. So she gave you your humble ego. Yeah, it's it's the ability to be like, there, there's always somebody better than you. So yeah. why would you walk around thinking you're good? Yeah, I've debated if you should get some help, but I think, <laughs> I I think don't, I don't I want you to change it. I, I want I, you to be the way you are. I think I should go and see a grief counselor every week. <laughs> and have pizza with them and talk yeah. about your feelings. And we can just talk about aging and death <laughs> and like who is your craziest client. <laughs> You know, like yeah. that's what I would want. Then open your books. I want to see some of the people that you've fucking interviewed and how dumb they are. <laughs> like, who wants a grief counselor? Like, uh, it's like, well, the first stage is like, well, what are we doing here? Are yeah. you, am I skipping steps? No, they're not skippable. <laughs> You're going to go through all of them headlong. Okay, then what are you doing here? Why yeah. $90 an hour for somebody who can't even help me skip fucking disbelief or whatever? Yeah. 
the first, I can't even <laughs> skip the first one because the fuck are you doing here? You're gonna go through this, and only time will heal. There's like, plenty well, of jobs out there that are just invented heal, to the fuck am I paying you for? <laughs> yeah. And the, uh, time doesn't even really heal, does it? Like you, you know, you can't like years go by, but you're still like, it's just because you forget everything, right? Yeah. Your memory, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. So that's all it is: is your fading memory makes the loss of a loved one less relevant. Yeah. Because your brain is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a positive, fun conversation. It is positive. It, but I, I've, I've been around people that did not deal well with death, like, and I've been around pe- people that have dealt well with death, like I. I'm one of the pass away people. I'm one of. The, I don't even say dead. I'm like, he's oh, pa- passed on. And then someone's like, oh, I don't like how they say passed on because they're gone. I'm like, just let let people say whatever they want to say. If it's their loved one that's gone. I think like, a harsh dead. Nobody should say dead. No, 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 no. Like you wouldn't sorry say, I'm sorry your, your mom is dead. dead. No. You know, no, like no, a hard no. D on it. No, that's not. Your mom's dead. <laughs> and I'm so sorry. You know when you use that? When like somebody is fighting with you and, and they say something about your mom. You're like, oh, well, my mom's dead. Just to piss that's them off. That's right. When because that's like, what oh, Wendy would want. I bet want. your mom's fat. Like, actually, she's dead. That's so what Wendy would like. I don't know if you skeletons are quite thin. <laughs> She got burned up. Everybody gets burned up, right? Yeah, I don't know. Too, I don't know. Like, I think there are still people that get buried, but I would cryogenically want, frozen. That's I my. Would want this to get is burned. my path. Burn me and put me in a firework. No, no, no. Cryogenically frozen, thought out. Um, when it's revealed that that's not going to work, all my cells are shattered. <laughs> Do you want to be so like cryogenically on cryogenically that... freeze me for one hundred years? Yeah. Until it's laughable that we thought that that could work. Yeah. And then thaw me out. Yeah. And then burn half of me. Okay. And You've then, thought about this a lot. Oh, yeah. And then burn <laughs> half of me, yeah. right? And then put that in an urn, the bottom half. Okay. Um, so put that in an urn, and it's Sean's dick. And then you just write Sean's <laughs> cock on that, on the urn. And then the other half of me, you just refreeze and bury. Yeah, can you please put that in your will that you would like your dick cremated, but everything else? Right, yeah, I want to cremate my cock. And then (laughs) my relatives from 100 years from now have to put it on their mantle. (laughs) They don't even remember me. None none of them knew me. None of them had any memory of me. I'm just their great, great grandfather. Oh my God. And now somebody comes to their house and puts a golden fucking Sean's cock (laughs) urn. (laughs) <laughs> right in their mailbox and then they have to decide like what do we what the fuck oh my god like i'm taking you know like do we where do we put this and i just want people like a hundred years from now to be very confused but you're still frozen cockless and then what happens if they you can be unfrozen? buried now i'm buried now i've buried frozen and you know then i've covered all the bases right but why i've been you cremated i've buried? been christian buried so, like, if the Christians are right, boom, half of me's buried. You have a Viking there you go, funeral Jesus. for your cock. There you go, Jesus. <laughs> you put your and cock yeah, on a boat a and Viking shoot it out to the sea. Viking funeral for my cock where I, <laughs> I have a fucking an arrow with fire on the end of it pointed to the sky and it lands on my dick next to a spire. And then my entire family's like, <laughs> and then the flames go up and you can't see their faces anymore. And then it goes to the next scene or whatever. So, yeah, bury half of me. Okay. Frozen All right. for some reason. Um, but yeah, the cryogenic freezing is really the key and okay. then giving it to people a hundred years from now, here's my <laughs> dick, eat this. And then it's like, who is this? That's our great, great grandfather. And he paid $5,000 for this lab to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Uh, what what do you want to have happen to your body after you're gone? Burn me and put me in a firework. Put you in a what? Firework. Put, Shoot, oh, yeah. you want to be in a that'd be Wouldn't fucking that be fun? cool. Yeah, that would I'm be cool. sure that that's a that's something you can do. I've seen like you can be made like even like when my mom died, they're like, well, you can have her made into a diamond. You can take her fingerprints and put it in jewelry. I got uh, ashes of her put in a bullet because <laughs> all the other all the other charms were like hearts and teddy bears, and then there's like a bullet. I'm like, I'll take the bullet. Please. Yeah, I don't know why it's always hearts because then it just reminds you that their heart yeah. failed, right? Yeah. You're like, well, that's what fucking killed them. Yeah. Why would I want their ashes in the thing that stopped? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah, no, it's crazy. No, I want to be. I would want want to be burned. Like, why do you want to rot in the ground? No, that's the way to go. I think rotting in the ground. Yes. I don't like bugs. I don't want them eating me. People always think that that they. But burning's better. Yes. Like you like burn. Get me out of here. You're dead. Yes. Who cares if maggots eat you? That's organic. You're giving back to the fucking planet. I that didn't gave want you to life. give back to the planet to begin with. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I it's barely the only recycle. GoFundMe we're asking you to donate to, and you can't even do that. <laughs> you, your, organ, your organ donor card is probably like, nope. No, I have nothing. an organ donor. No. Hi-ya. I'm like, take it all and then burn me. 
It's, I I'm dead. All, I don't need my keep body. It at all. Sorry, pal. I, I don't think any of my organs are usable, <laughs> but my cousin uh, died and her lungs were donated because she never smoked or anything, which is like very rare for lungs to be donated. But really, I know like, a, and even I, uh, one of my boyfriends, his mom passed away with aneurysm just suddenly. And then she mm. donated her organs and like saved three lives. I definitely have my organs, <laughs> but no one's going to want my organs. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, but they won't they'll work any properly, probably. No, they'll work. Jesus Christ. But give I don't want to be credit. But I don't want to be like a some credit. I don't want to be donated to science. That's something I do not want to be. For a bunch of people to carve me up and like look at Oh, look at her pancreas. It's abnormally large. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that yeah, funny I don't pancreas. Be that. Look at that bitch. And I, and I also <laughs> I also don't want to donate my eyes. It just seems weird. I don't know. I guess I, I, Alberta matter, has but. the lowest rate of eye donation. Really? Yeah. I think I don't know why I, I'm weirded out by it, but I guess I should. Who cares, right? But like, it, I just mostly because Christians think you need eyes in heaven to oh. see, right? So I'm they just, don't so. want to lose their eyes because they believe in a soul, but they also believe you got to keep the eyes. <laughs> like, why do people want to keep their eyes? You're dead. Yeah, you're right. That's what the fuck that's are you doing stupid. with it? Christian heaven without a cock. Christian yeah, heaven you're in, with I'm no in cock. Christian heaven with no cock. I can't fuck anybody, but, but I you have, have my eyes. eyes. <laughs> I got my eyes. I can bitch. look at titties. I can look, but I can't touch. <laughs> If you know what I mean with my cock's ass. <laughs> I love that you want your cock separated from you and burnt. Oh, yeah, on I want to, yeah, cock cremation, like a genital cremation. <laughs> I think you can just write it on the form. There's probably a box you, you can You can? Take. No. Sure, you can just be like, um, normal burial, genital, <laughs> do, 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 genitals. Yeah. Oh, my genital God. Genital cremate. Oh, my God. Just a tiny urn. Put that in a fucking cock around your, you know what I mean? Like a cock necklace. Yes. Yeah, instead of a bullet, a little penis. Yeah, just a penis. Just like those with bachelorette necklaces. <laughs> 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 just a cock straw. Oh my God, is that ever the tackiest? I like, know. Why does it, nope? How co- how have girls? That's how you know girls are just the same as guys. How have they not gotten tired of that? <laughs> they, it's I still mean, a joke. Like they're still like, oh, check it out. <laughs> like it's like if guys did that, girls would be like, yeah. Because <laughs> okay, you guys do it every idiots. day, <laughs> like but in we a don't certain have, like, way. Pussy straw. Like, I mean, no, you, you just grab them. A pussy, <laughs> you just is... you guys just grab them whenever you please. When they're pregnant. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you just. Checking. I don't. I don't get the whole dick thing, on like it's like, but it's like bachelor bachelor parties. They go to the strippers. Like that's like I know cheesy, and, and then they cheat for the last time. Or whatever. They cheat for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last that's time usually. until. Until That's six months before the wedding. Until this six months into time. the marriage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then I'm <laughs> right back on the pony. <laughs> right back on the pony. Well, what was oh what was God. Chris Rock's thing? Is men are as uh, what did he say? Men are as faithful as their options. Uh, is this a Chris Rock thing? Yeah, that's I what he I've said on stage somewhere. or something. Yeah, he yeah. said men are as faithful as their options. Like, you know, if they have... Which, I don't know if that's true. That's kind of like, oh, I'm not getting what I want, so I'm going to get it somewhere else. Okay, well, then leave. Like, don't <laughs> stick around, like, if you... That's the thing. Hmm. But I guess, like, divorce is hard, right? Especially if it's you expensive. have children, it's expensive. It's, like... Yeah. I think the only reason my parents got divorced was my mom was like, don't give me anything. I don't want anything. Like, <laughs> like Yeah, no, divorce would be... Yeah, I mean, how many people do you... Like, I don't know. And it I just don't know seems how, like it would cost I think the divorce money. is more... You I, have, you'd have to hate the person. Like, divorce to me is an option of, like, do I hate Do the you person. hate them? And I can't live with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. But... You know, other than that, it's like, well, what are we going to do? Like, I'm going to live in a fucking bachelor pad. Yeah. And but see that's my the thing kids through like, a screen. I think hey that more women will initiate a divorce over bed because, you know, women, for the most part, will get alimony because they aren't normally the, the breadwinner, but it's changing. Like, my cousin got a divorce and she makes more than her ex-husband and she has to pay him alimony. I know. Yeah, I know a yeah. guy who... And he's yeah. going for it all. Like, he's not even just like, ah, don't worry about really? it. Really? Wow. He's like taking it. He's maxing it out, hey. He's taking it. Well, did it. she initiate divorce That's proceedings? That's the thing. I don't. I don't know. I think that one might have been a very mutual thing. I don't know. I don't know. Because when D, <laughs> it was funny when DMX died, I saw a guy who tweeted like, "DMX got me through my divorce, and I'm gonna miss him." Oh. And I was like, "Well, I'm gonna go ahead and guess if DMX got you through your divorce that you did not initiate proceedings." Yeah, I don't think a lot like, of men you know, initiate. Like, I don't if you listen to D, like, yeah, you're like you're listening to DMX through a divorce. I don't think men. First of all, I don't think a lot of men initiate divorces just because I feel like, I don't know, like I just I think it's more of a woman thing. It's like, I'm leaving, but you're still gonna pay me. Like, like, 
I think that it's a lot easier for a woman to ask for divorce. Yeah, men than just for... keep poisoning the well until. Well, the because girl they leaves, know, especially right? if there's kids, they know that they're gonna have to now pay guys. child support and live on their own, and it's it's a huge financial burden for a lot of men. So some I think if there's kids enough. involved, it's hard. Some guys have enough balls to like break up with a girl, like a fit, like actually like we're going to break up. Yeah. Most men are, you know, they're like, well, this is gonna be all weird and crying, and yeah, and so the... they just like continue to do things that are going to piss the other person off until yeah. that person says fuck you i'm leaving the argument and then though you're like okay cool that that's good that that happened the argument though when people are like oh well we're gonna stay together for the kids i'm like please don't do that because that's what my parents did and that fucked me up way more than if my parents had divorced when i was five i had to sit for an extra 10 years and listen to them fight but we just talked about it we nobody stays together for the kids they stay together for alimony and no child i know but people avoidance. will say that people will say i'm we're, so the, as soon as the kids are out of high school we'll do this and i you're right it's probably because they're gonna be 18 soon they have to be child support yeah like uh, why the f are you shutting us off no i thought he was fucking shutting us like, down turn this Jim off like, i don't want to talk you. about divorce <laughs> <laughs> i'm a child of divorce <laughs> oh i'm a child of yeah i don't know what's worse child of divorce or child of people that stayed together but and hated we're each miserable. other miserable i think whatever. that's way worse but even people who stayed together and loved each other is still gross absolutely well even that I like don't... parents who want to fuck and you're like <laughs> that's exposed weird. to that that's weird i would rather come from divorce or parents who hated each other and stay together than yeah. two parents that are like all over each other and rubbing yeah. genitals and parties <laughs> and you're like holy fuck but even though like most marriages though <laughs> like my grandparents were married for like 70 years and they like they didn't hate each other but they were very rude to each other at the end like like, no, you're, that's not yeah. what happened. Yeah, it's just them calling each other on stories. Yeah. They end up just being or fact checkers Or I'll do what I want. Other. Like, my grandpa loved to smoke Colt, uh, Colt cigars, and my grandma would always be like, Grandpa's you shouldn't loved. smoke those cigars. And my brother, she'd always, like, nag on him for that. And he would be like, Florence, I almost died in a Japanese prisoner war camp. I will smoke as many cigars as I want to. I will he construct was, my own lung prison. He's like, I'll smoke what I want. He, he'd always be like, I'm I'm 75 and I'm still smoking and my you lungs are still... You could use my lungs to christen a boat. They're so hard. <laughs> oh, my grandpa was awesome. Oh, yeah, my no, God. No, my grandparents, they usually just fact-checked each other. That was their... It was yeah. like this... It was their version of love, which is oh, you'll, weird and sad. The thing when, when people have been married for a very long time and like everyone thinks it's great, but they but you'll see them and they'll do like little snippy comments to each other. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they like, oh they're, fucking, they're annoyed with each other. They can go from zero to but 60 not in enough a to, second. Yeah, to end it all. Like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually it's just like two words. Yeah. That, well, that's great. Yeah. No, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, the girl, that's what girls say a lot. Like, you know, oh, that's normal around here. You know, <laughs> something horrible <laughs> happens and they're like, oh, that around here, that's quite normal. And then, they, then, and then they, I like, love their big eyes. And then they walk away, you know, like, <laughs> like oh, but wow, your fence doesn't look really good. Well, that's normal around here. And then they <laughs> fucking get up to grab another what the fuck some girl drink you know some <laughs> non-beer but something with oh, booze in it. oh a white claw chardonnay a chardonnay fucking white claw oh that's normal around here and then they're fucking gone to get another beverage oh only grapefruit left Ugh. and then your husband is left there with your friend going like well yeah i guess that is normal around, around here, here. <laughs> i'm also sorry about how this looks but that's part of a relationship you have to have that hate for each yeah, other yeah but you know when it's in good fun <laughs> and when it's like yeah intended to be hurtful oh yes yeah you can see that see that's what i mean like if, if, if a couple's been together for a very long time and like you can see them be snippy with each other but you can still see that it's the, the love is still there or my parents when they never ever loved each other they, they hated each other they must have at some point i don't think so do you think I it was just the initial fuck phase that and then when they were done with that they were like or maybe they didn't even have that. Maybe they were just, like, mostly friends the whole time. Yeah, I don't know the whole story. I, I've read letters that I found after my I mom passed away. I can't believe you've read letters. Oh, That's God, so they're cool. great. It's so awesome. And like, they're not even love letters. They're hate letters. There was a few hate like letters. Like, you found your mom's old hate letters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were good. Like, I, I'm, like, more and more, like, you know, I'm like my mother. <laughs> He would be as bitchy yeah, as this. We have the same curses. <laughs> the same. We write but, the same way. But it is weird when you like, because re I read like all these letters that my dad and mom wrote each other when he was in a yeah, Buddhist send. monk in, in Northern California. <laughs> like, it's just like crazy shit. You're like, these are my parents? Like this yeah, and weird shit? they probably shit. have snippy shit. Like, well, he's got to be quiet for 30 days. And she's like, well, that'll be easy for him. And then <laughs> she fucking gets up and grabs another white ball. <laughs> oh, that's normal around here. Yeah, I got Quiet for 30 days. That's oh, that'll be here. easy for him. <laughs> He's not much of a communicator. Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm getting a sandwich. Yeah, I think that marriages can work, but it, I I don't think they can be fun all the time. That could anyone that says that their marriage is perfect all the time is lying. Yeah. Lying. That's and just you, not possible. It's not possible to constantly right. love somebody always i'm sure i know adam and he annoys me but i still love him i still have love for him but if there comes a point where i don't even want to look at his face i'm like well then i don't think that's a good thing but Maybe i don't think that shave, will happen shave yeah like that'll be that when you know divorce is imminent when you tell him to shave no shave so you look like a different person i would never tell him to shave shave and then fuck me <laughs> shave call yourself trevor and fuck me <laughs> no I think that no. I, I'm glad okay. I'm getting married later on in life because I've gone way later, through let's way be later. Like not even. <laughs> I'm not even in the part where I should be having a wedding anymore. I'm I so know. old. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, fuck you, it. Your dress should be black. And you should have a veil and you should be, I'm so <laughs> sorry, everybody. It should be a viewing. With yeah. Just Adam in a tuxedo laying pretend dead. But I look at back at some of my exes and I was like, I can't even imagine being married to that person. Do you do you see what their lives are now and say, oh, they found some girl just like me. You I hope you're fucking happy. <laughs> no, uh, that's that's what Wendy did to my dad. <laughs> oh, I'll tell that story. So my parents got a divorce. And I, I don't know if like my mom went to a therapist and they told her to write some letters, but don't mail them. Yeah, probably grief counselor. counselor. How does it feel to die? To mourn your what your marriage. But uh, so she wrote a letter, and my stepmom is very similar to my mom, like Ukrainian family. Just they they kind of look alike. Like everything about them is quite similar. And so my mom wrote this letter to him. She goes, well, I set you free so you could go do what you want. And then you just went around and you got stuck with me again. And then she wrote out, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I just love the I can't believe I can't believe she it. didn't have a night where she burned all those. She just kept them all. She just kept them all. Cataloged. My it. mom was a hoarder though, so I think oh, she forgot. She well, she loved to keep stuff in. Like she had magazines from the eighties when we were and she and we had to move those things. She moved quite a few times and we had to move her hoard every time. Yeah. It was not fun. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the ultimate throw everything away person. I think I'm getting That's to that point because I don't want to get to the point that like, I do just keep stupid stuff sometimes, but now I'm getting better at being like, okay, no, this, I'll be like, no, this will be a nice thing to keep, and then I don't need this test from grade six. Like, I don't need this kind of shit. I'm the kind of person who would be like, there's no room for that blender on, it looks dumb up there. Yeah, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And then I just throw it away, and then later in life, you I'm need like, a blender. fuck, I'd love a smoothie. <laughs> 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 Too bad I got rid of that blender. That's the and worst then I'll part of blend it and be like, there's still big berries in it. That's the worst part about those like small appliances that you have. Like even like the Instapot, I'm sure I'm gonna it's gonna sit on the shelf in about two months for a long oh, time. Oh yeah, you guys are but, going like, Instapot crazy. It's so fun then, to cook you, with. You know. But I don't know, like you, yeah, you, I have stuff that I have, and I'm like, I rarely. We have like Adam bought his mom, you know, one of those old fashioned milkshake machines, like they're with the silver cups and they oh, have those yeah. sticks. So he has it. He has it. It I was like, what, those. $200 or something? What? 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And she didn't wow. want it, so she gave it to him. So we have this milkshake machine, but I think we've used it once. And it just sits yeah. there. It's like a fondue set. Yeah. Where you're like, when am I going to This will be fun. And then you. Yeah, when am like... I going to want a running river of cheese in my house? <gasps> we got a fountain. <gasps> Go get it. We got a fountain. <laughs> Go get it. Because <laughs> we're going to do a nacho cheese fountain for the wedding. So we're testing oh, this that's out. That's awesome. So we got a chocolate fountain. And it's gonna and it looks really ugly in our house sitting there. But, you know. What does it do? Does it recycle? Like, does the cheese flow and yeah. then go down and, it, and then it up brings and it, it up just and keeps fucking keeps going, dripping down? I guess I just described a fountain. What else could it do? <laughs> no, no, Sean, the cheese fucking runs off into eternity, and you have to keep buying new cheese. <laughs> it's expensive, and, and it's, it's gonna cost you eighty thousand in cheese for the wedding. <laughs> my favorite cheese incident was we was I was at the Seven Eleven with my cousin. My favorite cheese. This incident. is so funny. My cousin was wasted, and we were at a Seven Eleven and. He was, he like stumbled over the nacho cheese thing and put his hand under it and pressed the button and then it, molten cheese came out. He was like, ah, he brought like second degree burns from nacho cheese at 7-Eleven. It wasn't funny for him, but it was funny for me. Yeah, look at this thing. Oh my God. So it comes, yeah, yeah, you can see the All little right. There's twisty tiers, thing. there are different tiers. And then Adam says that we can use cheese in that. Or ranch dressing. Ranch dressing. He said ranch, but I don't want hot, but he said you can use cold. It was a heater. Oh, it's a heat, okay. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be good. It's Are pretty you excited small, for your wedding, or is it like COVID not the? I just like have. N I can't plan. I I mean, we're not getting married now. Like we're not having the wedding now until July next year. So. I think you guys should have had like a a, her a heroic anti-mask wedding um, about <laughs> at five the Whistle Stop ago. Cafe. <laughs> at the Whistle Stop Cafe at a church, at a proper a Grace Life Church. 
It would have been so oh, great if you guys so got a funny. maskless marriage at the oh Grace Life Church. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Invite all your friends. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. No. It's hard to plan a wedding in a, a pandemic. I was, like, reading on Reddit. This one girl was like, I, I was supposed to get married this weekend, and then the pandemic happened, so, and then I got pregnant, so, and now my husband's like, well, we don't need to have a wedding, and she's like, but I, I really want to have a wedding, because it's, a, it's a, mostly a girl thing, I mean, I'm sure there's guys that, like, want I'm to sure, have a wedding, yeah. but, like, all these poor COVID brides, I'm just poor COVID brides, but there's these, like, all these, their friends who are already married were like, well, it's not really about the wedding, it's about the marriage, so you can have a tiny backyard wedding, when you had to come to my 600-person wedding, and buy yeah, this, not fair. and, like, it's just it's like and so all these COVID brides feel guilty because like some people are like well you don't even really need to do it you already did it in your backyard but it's like no go have another fucking oh, yeah. party have if you a want party to. for fuck's sakes when we can when this is all over spend that money raise that down payment get that acreage yeah <laughs> and then there's me just sitting at home watching fucking sports that's it I don't even but the thing I don't I draw the line oh are you sad I, about the Oilers. I guess so. That was embarrassing. Like, I do. I draw the line at the WWE like I don't. Yeah, that's not I sports. can't really. That's man soap opera. Yeah, it's kind of an ugly. It's weird too because it makes you think like wrestling must be the best sport in the world because you couldn't do a fake version of another sport and have anybody give a fuck. Yeah. If you did like fake hockey, if there was like a WWE hockey league. With a storyline. Like, yeah, and guys are grabbing the mics out of the interviewer's hands <laughs> and like, we're going to fucking crush the Carolina Hurricanes. They're going down. <laughs> and then a ref, you know, gets knocked out by a coach yeah. who has a chair. Yeah. And then he wakes up. It's not up that they're not athletes because they the are team, still athletes. The XFL. But, yeah. They're not athletes. It's not. It, even they're after they, athletes. Even when they say it's sports entertainment. No, sport, the essence of sport yeah. is that the, the outcome is unknown. Yeah. So as soon as the outcome is known, it's no longer a sport. It's just entertainment. Like it's just, So now you're watching actors dance. Yeah. Which I don't really understand. I don't really get why. It must suck for like real wrestlers. Imagine being like a real human like wrestler. Greek wrestler. Yeah, the Greco-Roman. Like traditional like, Olympian. Olympian. Yeah. And you go to your friends and you're like, hey, you want to come to my wrestling match Saturday? And they're like, is that the blood sport one? <laughs> Where, like, guys are fucking knocked out, and like, you're like, no, 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 we, no. Like, we, we, we wrestle. We don't, like, kick each other in the head. Oh, is it, like, the one, like, fucking Macho Man fake stuff? And no, it's, like, we really engage in a in an athletic competition. And then they're like, nah, <laughs> I, I don't want to. Like, the real version of the sport is less is less interesting than this fake. It must piss wrestlers off. Yeah, I think like, it would. To be like, what's with this fake? These guys aren't even wrestling. And they're <laughs> 10 million times more famous than me. And richer. It'd be like if, you know, as a comedian, you're, like, watching all these people who are up there and their entire act was written by somebody else. Yeah. And they're fucking zillionaires yeah. and the most famous comics on the planet. You'd be like, but none of that's real. Yeah. It's not there. <laughs> you know, but. Theirs. The public is like, I don't fucking care. It's Gre good. I hate Greco-Roman shit. Boring. You, it, good luck with your tussle Saturday. <laughs> but I'd rather watch some real wrestlers. <laughs> like Macho Man, Randy <laughs> Savage. <laughs> oh my God, is it dumb. We listened to the final Oilers game. Again, we On the radio? Hockey. What are you, fucking some 1930s family? Well, we don't have... And like, then we listen to War of the Worlds. We don't pay for TV. Like, we have streamers, but we don't like get... Yeah. Sports, but like, but yeah, when the Oilers lost, we got swept by Winnipeg, and then everyone's like, Fucking "Oh, Winnipeg. they they did their best." I'm like, "No, no, they should lose a million dollars each. Fuck them. <laughs> they shouldn't be getting I what like they how were." You made it immediately about them being overpaid because all you NHL are players are overpaid. Give me all some of that sports Connor athletes McTeevit. are overpaid. so it should be like if you can't win, if you can't even win one playoff game, get give. Take, you don't get all your money. I'm sorry, dude. Well, they've already been paid. I know. They don't even get paid. But it's gross. So their money is all regular season, and then playoffs is like bonuses yeah. and shit like that. Well, I, hopefully they don't get so a bonus. So technically your joke doesn't hold up. <laughs> okay, sportsman. Sportsman, okay, sports John. Man. Okay, sports, except WWE. But yeah, no, I... I can't watch WWE. I don't watch Formula One. I'm not really into cars. I don't understand zippity, watching... Zip, 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 I don't understand zip, zip, watching zip, 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 racing. Zip, 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 zip. I kind of... I was once at a Formula One race live. That was fun, like, being there. But watching it on TV, I just... I had a boyfriend that watched it. I'm like, how is this interesting? I don't find it interesting at all. No, I wouldn't even want to blow somebody while it was on in the background. <laughs> Like if that was his fantasy. Most sports I can't watch on TV. I only they're only fun live. Well, you listen to the Oilers on the radio. Well, for because fuck's sake. Adam was the nature. I wasn't. Oh, Adam. Was... I actually watched them lose on Google. He watched live, them lose. Live updates. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he's a. I mean, he's a Canucks fan, so he's probably like, 
he either hates the Oilers or... No, he likes them. Yeah. So, he has to like... He doesn't have yeah. to. I honestly could care less. As long as he doesn't like Calgary. <laughs> I have too much family history with everyone. We had family in Calgary that would like... We were taught to hate them. <laughs> Our families were... Yeah, hate the Calgary Flames and the Stampede are they're, horrifying. It's the only thing that's irrational that I'm like, no, for real, fuck them. Yeah, fuck everything about you know, Calgary. Like, <laughs> rationally, objectively, it's like, who cares? You're the Oilers, yeah. they're the Flames, yeah. it's all who gives a but shit. But we were raised. But it's like, no, for real, fuck them. Yeah. And it's mostly just their success. Like, you don't, I don't care about the Flames. I want Flames fans to be depressed. Yes, I think that's more than anything. I don't think it's about the sport. It's about no. like being able to be like, that's my team and we want, I want it all. people that live in other places to be sad. Yeah. For no Or reason. you want to be able to call your friend in Calgary and be like, you suck. Fully aware <laughs> that all these athletes that I'm rooting for would spit on me at a party. Absolutely. You know, like they would spit on my face and laugh at me at a party. <laughs> and I would freeze, just like my ancestors. <laughs> I would non-athletically freeze. And then, you know, I would just, they'd be like, fuck, does this guy reek? <laughs> I think he just shit himself. He <laughs> like Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl and Nurse at a party. Yeah, I don't get that. And they just, that. they would pick on me for having a bad skin. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd try to leave and they'd be like, where are you fucking going? And then they'd corner me and I'd freeze. How good is Connor McDavid if he can't even help them win a playoff game? I don't know. Everyone's I mean, like, he's so great, best. he's so great. I know, that's what they always say. They tried their best. Well, I mean. Well, you just... failed, boys. There's you failed. nothing You that... embarrassed our city. You embarrassed. Listen, you you're have, making our you mayor. Let down a lot of you're kids. making our mayor wearing Winnipeg Jets jersey. I fucking oh, hate fucking, that, is that so ever much. Stupid. I wonder if Hitler oh, did that in like, <laughs> Russia. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if we beat you in the Blitzkrieg, <laughs> you gotta wear you our have to wear the uniform. Kaiser's hat. <laughs> And the take queen a has to wear the Kaiser's hat. And have a portrait and take done. take a picture and put it on <laughs> 1930s Twitter. <laughs> Whatever that would be. The London oh Free Press. That's so funny. That's so funny. That's well, so I guess you should wrap it up. I, yeah. I'm, I, long My time, long time listener. First time guest. I don't... Who gives a <laughs> shit? We're like, we lost. We always lose. The Northern Queen uh, were brought to you by them. And they they're great. great candies. Check them out online. Amazing candies. We're also, what are we on? We're on the CHO Podcast Network. CHOP? Yeah. Comedy Here Often Podcast Network. Comedy Here Often Podcast I mean, we're about 20 Network. podcasts down on the list, but we're on it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like, we're not, I love how I can't even do one. We're not Schindler's first pick, but we're out of the camp. <laughs> You know what I mean? Imagine being the last name on Schindler's list. That <laughs> yeah, would be the ultimate for you. <laughs> Fucking, there but was also, Gary and then you. But also, if you were the last one, you'd be like, Hey, ass. how did it take so fucking long? Hey, you're lucky you're not 501, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I had a longer list. I did some editing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Oscars are like. I don't know what that means. Well, that was fun. Thank you. For yeah, thanks for being on your own podcast. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that it came up at the end. You know, <laughs> we had to bring it we up. We had to do like our sponsors and then bring up World the War II. The Holocaust and World War II. <laughs> oh God, you're so pathetic. It's all your fault. Sean's just talking right. to himself. <laughs> Enjoy your day.